Carnival of Souls by Melissa Marr. The story begins with a bargain, a bargain between a witch and a demon to protect a child at all costs. And so the story begins. There are the demons and there are the witches. After a brutal war, the demons fight for the city and the witches move up to the city. Neither go to the other's domain and the witches don't consort with demons, ever. In the city below, there's a rigid caste system. Aya is a high-born girl, but she wants to make a difference in her city. Aya wants to be part of the ruling government to protect those too lowly to protect themselves. But she's a woman, and women don't hold power. They get married and have babies, continue with their husband's line. Aya refuses to ever bear a child, so the fight in the carnival of souls is her one way out and her one way to rule. She must be brutal to win. She must be smart, and she must make alliances. And she makes one with Caleb, a cur from the lowest caste of the city. Up in the world above, Mallory and her father live town to town, never too long in one spot. Mallory's father is a witch, and the danger is following them. Mallory sees a boy one day from a coffee shop. The second coffee shop, the second town, she sees him. She's drawn to him as he is to her. This boy is Caleb. He is fascinated by her and is drawn to her as she is to him. But there's a contract out on Mallory, and he is there to fulfill that contract. Despite everything her witch father can do, the demons have found them. Their worlds collide. And if you liked City Bones or Daughter of Smoke and Bones, you will love Carnival of Souls. This book is called Conversion by Catherine Howe. Massachusetts is where it takes place, and it is not just famous for Harvard and MIT, but it is probably most famous as being the home for the Salem Witch Trials. This book takes place in Danvers, Massachusetts, and it's the home of St. Joan's Preparatory Academy. Colleen is part of an all-girls school, and they are in their senior year. It's the year of AP classes, competition eager just ahead of each other for that extra 1% of their grade. It's the year of college applications, and there's a fierce competition to get into the number one schools. Yale, Tufts, Dartmouth, Harvard. St. Jones has its own social hierarchy, but this is not a story of popular girls bullying the less popular girls. This is a story that begins in an AP US history class, where Deanna, the popular girl, starts trying to claw her face off before she falls out of her chair spasming like she was being electrocuted. Days later, Colleen and her friends look out the window to see that St. Jones Dean and Father Malloy beside a stretcher on the way to an ambulance. This time, it's Deanna's best friend, Jennifer. The next time that Colleen sees these girls is in the chapel with Father Malloy in an assembly. Jennifer's in a wheelchair and has lost most of her hair. Deanna has uncontrolled twitches and spasms. Why are these girls getting ill? One of the student's mothers is a news anchor and all of a sudden she's created a news frenzy wanting to know that same thing. Salem, Massachusetts is not where the Salem witch trials occurred. Danvers, home to St. Joan's Preparatory Academy, is, however. This is The Graveyard Book by Neil Gaiman. This is the story of a boy. This is a story of nobody. When a man named Jack comes into this boy's home, Jack kills both of his parents and his sister. But something in this boy has him crawling down these stairs, toddling up this hill and into the gates of the cemetery. Mrs. Owens and Mr. Owens listens to the plea of the dead boy's mother to protect him from the man who is coming to kill her son. The thing about Mrs. and Mr. Owens is that they're ghosts. Mrs. Owens has always wanted a child. They agree to take the boy in and he becomes their son, Bod. Nobody Owens. This is the story of Bod growing up, with the graveyard his home and ghosts as his loving family. They know that Bod can never leave the cemetery safely, so they find Bod a mentor in Silas who can come and go from the graveyard, who can bring Bod food, who teaches him to read and to write, to be his friend. Bod makes another friend when he meets Scarlet, a normal girl who plays with him in the nature preserve that the cemetery is in. Scarlet must eventually move away, but she comes back later in Bod's life when Bod is a teenager, when Scarlet and her mother move back from Scotland. Scarlet meets an older gentleman, Mr. Frost, in the graveyard doing tombstone rubbings, and they become fast friends. Mr. Frost invites Sophie to his house one night. This is the same house Bod used to live in. 
The jacks aren't gone, neither is the danger, and no I Hunt Killers by Bear Liga. This is the story of Jazz. Jazz spent the first 12 years of his life growing up with the world's most infamous serial killer. Jazz's dad brought his work home with him. He taught Jazz his trade, step by gory step. But Jazz was saved from his life when the town's sheriff discovered who the serial killer was, 120 bodies later. That same sheriff took Jazz under his wing and mentored Jazz to grow up to be normal. Jazz has a friend now and a girlfriend. He goes to school and he even takes care of his very disturbed grandmother in that same house he grew up in. But those killings have started again. The killings with the same trademarks that were his dad's. But his dad is in prison, so how could this be? Jazz, who grew up with that monster. Jazz, who was weaned on his father's trade. Jazz, who lives with his insane and very violent grandmother. Could Jazz be the one killing? Or is there a copycat killer, a fan of his father's work in his own town? Find out in I Hunt Killers. Miss Peregrine's Home for Peculiar Children by Ransom Riggs. What I love about this book is that it's truly original, a departure from other stories. The other part that I love about this book is how Ransom Riggs wrote it, inspired by found peculiar pictures that he has collected over the years from basements and from attics, from yard sales and estate sales. All of these photos are in the book. Peculiar photos of peculiar children that don't seem that they could all be real. None of these photos have been retouched to add any of their peculiarity. But the story starts off less peculiar and more sad. Jacob loves Grandpa Abe, but as his grandfather grows more paranoid and deluded, and they have to start hiding his World War II guns to keep him safe, Jacob's heart just breaks. Grandpa Abe has told him these fantastic stories as he's grown up, filled with fantasy and adventure, all accompanied by strange photographs and a diary. As Jacob grows older, his grandfather's sanity seems to unravel until the day that Jacob sees his grandfather killed, and suddenly his grandfather doesn't seem to be crazy at all. Jacob ends up on this Welsh island that his grandfather had lived on before he moved to America. This is where Jacob begins to see that his grandfather was not crazy at all and that all the fantastical stories were real. The Invisible Boy, the Firestarter Girl, and eventually Miss Peregrine herself. This island is also where Jacob understands that people are hunting him, just like they hunted his grandfather. He also begins to understand why 